Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mocking Framework Mock, also pronounced MockU. It is a new mocking framework that's been released recently, not that I do an introductory overview of it. We will be learning how to create expectations today on an interface and how to use the mocking framework in various scenarios. To save time and save energy, I've already gone ahead and created a very simple set of classes and a couple methods that we'll actually be using. The first thing that we're, we're going to do is we're actually going to learn how to mock out a service. And we're going to do this by mocking out our email service. So I've gone ahead and I've created this concrete class called email service. As you can see, it implements the I email service. And it has one very simple method, send email. And in fact, all it really does is return false because I'm not really worried about the implementation of this for this, this episode. And I've created a class called emailer. Emailer is actually going to pretend to go get a list of data. We'll just hard code it for now. Iterate through that list of data, basically emails with subjects or uh, values, and call into our your email service. Okay, you'll notice that I'm actually doing this by accessing the interface. So email service is actually an implementation of the I email service, and I'm injecting the interface or the service itself into the constructor using constructor injection. I am not going to be using an inversion of control or dependency injection container for this demo. I thought I'd keep that out and keep it a little more simple. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already created a shell test class. I'm using the NUnit testing framework. You can use any of the testing frameworks you want. And like I said, I'm using the MOQ mocking framework. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a test that will actually call into my stuff without any mocks, just to kind of show how, how it would work without mocks. So the first thing I need to do is create an instance of my emailer. And I'm also going to need to create an instance of my email service. And let's go ahead and just in, use the uh, constructor injection and just go ahead and inject that in. And then I'm very simply going to call emailer.sendbatchemails. Let's put a breakpoint down the sendbatch emails and let's actually run this. You'll notice I'm going to iterate over this, and I'll actually at this point step into the email service. So you'll actually notice that I am actually in the email service itself. I just want to demonstrate that if I, without mocks, I'm actually going to go through. And without mocks, this would be more of an integration test rather than a unit test. So I'm going to go ahead and F5 through this. There you go. So I've created my test with non mocks. So let's actually go ahead and create our first test using mocks. Okay, so here we go. The first thing we want to do is create a mock email service. I like to prefix all my objects that are mocks with the word mock. You don't have to. That's just something I like to do. And I'm actually going to use the new mock. This is an object or a class that's built into the mock framework. And I'm going to do it of I email service. So I've now created my mock. Well, in order for a mock to do anything or to be useful, I need to set up an expectation on that mock. So let's go ahead and do mock email service dot expect. Expect it tells me what I'm doing or wanting. And this uses generic, or uh, I'm sorry, Lambda expressions. So I'm going to do x send email. And I want to show you something real quick. Let's just provide empty strings. And it's going to return true. So we'll pretend that the emails actually were sent successfully. Now all I have to do is create an instance of my emailer. and provide it my mock email service with constructor injection. Do emailer, send batch emails. Yep. One thing to keep in mind is with mock framework, you actually need to give it the object, not just the instance, because this is actually an instance of the mock class. Inside of it will be the actual object, the instance of, what it, of the thing you're actually trying to mock out. So you need to use the object. Now if I run this, Everything should pass green, so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Now I'm going to step over, actually I'm going to remove my breakpoint and step over this. 
Let's go look at my test. Wait a minute, my test failed. Why did my test fail? Oh, okay. I know why my test failed. There's two reasons, actually. One, I told it empty string. So actually, when it calls into this method right here, it expects these to be empty string. Well, maybe I don't care what the actual values are in my particular mock. In this case, I don't. So I need to actually tell the mocking framework, I don't care. So we're actually say, is of any string. It can be of any string. Now, if I did care, I can actually put the real values in, which is very valuable many times. But in this particular instance, I don't really care what the values are. So this right here will say, as long as it's a string, it's good to go. Now let's rerun this again. There you go, it passed. Now, that that's pretty easy. Now, one thing I didn't put in here that it's just a good, best practice to go ahead and do, let's go ahead and call verify all on the service. That just tells that just says, hey, mocking engine, go ahead and verify that all the tests were actually called. Or all the, the expectations are actually called and actually met. So there you go. Very simple overview on how to create a mock. Now, in this case, I told it to return true. Let's actually go ahead and create another mock where I tell it to return false and see what happens. Now, if everything works out well, I should actually step right here to this, this breakpoint. And there you go. So when it came into here, it actually says, hey, by the way, I'm supposed to return false. Go ahead and do that and throw an exception. One thing I want to point out, let's hover over the email service mock real quick. You'll notice that it is of a type I email service proxy, and then it has what looks to be a GUID attached to the end of it. That is actually the, the actual object that the mock framework has created for you. So it's actually hijacked and returned you a fake proxy, a remoting proxy from the mocking framework. So if I hit F5, my test should actually fail at this point. Actually, it did. It failed right there, some message here. Well, the reason it failed was because I did throw an exception and I didn't set up my expectation to expect the exception. So if I wanted to do that, I would need to do something like this. Now if I rerun this, it should pass fine. Let's hit F5. Let's go down, and sure enough, it did pass. Now, that's great, but what if I want to test this service thrown in exception? Not necessarily returning true or false, but something happening like maybe the service is not found, or it's offline, or one of those type scenarios. Something that's pretty good to test for. Let's figure out how to do that real quick. So I'm going to copy this again, save time from typing. Now the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to actually go over to my mock and instead of saying return, I'm going to tell it to throw. Throws the keyword that says, hey, when you make this, when you call me, go ahead and just return an exception. So I'm going to do new exception and another message. And if all goes well, I should not actually get to my breakpoint here because it will be thrown. And the test will pass because I do have an expected exception attribute set on my test. and the, the test did pass. So there you go, we've gone through three very simple tests. This is just kind of the tip of the iceberg on how to use a mock and how to use mocking frameworks. But I thought I'd just give you a very simple overview to get, get the ball rolling. We'll have more in-depth episodes later on that kind of go more in detail on how to use mocking frameworks in more advanced ways. But let's take a look at some of the things we've learned how to do today. We learned how to create our mock object. We've learned how to set expectations. expectations. We've learned that if we don't care about the parameters are passed into methods, go ahead and tell it any. If we do care, we'd actually put some value here. This would actually say that I care that would be some value. We set up that it returns true. We then learned how that if we tell it to return false, how actually the method can return either or. And then we've actually learned how, how to set up our expectation to throw an exception. And then we also learned that we need to call verify all just to verify that all mock all of our expectations are actually met. So that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, I'll be doing future screencasts on how to use mocking frameworks in more advanced scenarios. Thanks a lot and hope you learned something.